Hey guys, so I picked up three of these 20th anniversary LEGO Star Wars sets. Now I actually picked up the Pod Racer and the Stormtrooper like carrier a while ago, but I was kind of hoping to pick up the Snowspeeder and review all three of these sets together. I do want to pick up the Slave Farm, but that should be in its own video because it's such a big set and I'm not interested in the Clone Walker thing. I, I did film the original review of that, so you can check that out if you want, but I'm just not really interested in the new one. And it's kind of annoying how they decide to place these figures. They put the classic Darth Vader with that episode 3 set, because otherwise people wouldn't buy it. Um, for some reason Han Solo stuck with this uh, Stormtrooper carrier when he really should be with the Slave 1-1, one, one. and Luke here is stuck with this, even though I think Luke should be stuck with the Snowspeeder, so you have like one new version, the old version of the figure. I don't know, I just think the overall placement of these figures do seem a little bit confusing, but whatever. Now, I was worried that I wasn't able to pick up the Snowspeeder because of the Lando figure in here. This version of Lando is still quite rare, despite being released here, because outside of this, he's only been released in the Cloud City set, and it's one of the reasons why the original Cloud City set was so expensive, because of this. But now that he's here, I figured everyone was just picking up the Snowspeeder. I was trying to like put, get this on the scalp market. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. It was just like, wait for the second batch of stock and uh, it's plenty all over the place. In fact, I got this for discount because the box was just like slightly bent and damaged. I was like, I don't care. I'm going to open it up and build the toy, for God's sake. So I got like a hundred, about a hundred Hong Kong dollars discount just because the box was a little bit damaged. Awesome. But how well do these sets do? And um, I will be comparing this one with the original. looking box art. For me personally, I've been chucking away a lot of the more recent LEGO set boxes. Just had no reason to keep them. Uh, they weren't really keeping the price uh, or value of the sets. They were just taking up space. So I got rid of them, whatever. My other big reason for getting rid of the boxes is once I've built the set, they don't fit in the boxes anymore. So I yeah, they were just pretty much useless, unless I was to completely take a part on, on no, that I would definitely get rid of the sets right away. But I, I wasn't going to do that. I actually want to keep these sets, so no more boxes. I just keep the instructions and whatever. But these ones here, these ones have a nice classic look to them. I mean, you know, they look nice. You know, they, they're kind of retro, but still sharp and fancy. And they all print and is smooth and stuff, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, enough of the boxes though, uh, inside of course you have the instructions manual and unlike most LEGO sets, the instructions manual include a few extra pages. Oh and by the way, all of the newer LEGO instructions have this QR code, you can get the digital version. Right here it says, 20 years ago, a long time ago, in a design studio far far away, we began imagining the iconic vehicles, characters and scenes from the Star Wars universe, exciting new models and minifigures. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of the LEGO Star Wars franchise, we have selected some of your favourites from the last 20 years and brought them up to date with this new collector's edition. To make it extra special, we have included in each set an exact replica of an original Star Wars minifigure and display stand. That's a lie. Now, more on that later. So, and then you have a page here showing the original set that this is based on and the new version. Uh, out of the three sets we have today, I do have the original one, not this one, so I'll be doing the comparison there. And in here it says uh, Ojino 2000 Han Solo minifigure and a bit description of Han there and showing you the other sets and the other minifigures that come with them. So out of uh, these five sets, I have three in front of me. I do want to pick up the Slave one, but I have no interest in picking this one up. And plus I already have a bunch of these Darth Vader's, so I'm not worried uh, on losing out on that. Though some of the other figures are kind of nice, I just have no interest in any of the Episode 3 clone trooper armaments. So after those three pages you go on with the usual instructions uh, on the back, some of the features and a minifigure checklist of what's in season and then the parts guide as well as advertisement for the uh, I guess more kid friendly sets from Battle of Park, the Moon of Endor one and that's it. So we can look through here we have the pot racer set and the original one the showcase here is 7131 pretty cool I guess. Hmm. It doesn't look too bad to be honest, aside from the uh, non transparent bits that they use in the middle, but that's alright. And finally, the Snow Speeder set. So we've got the original set here, 7130, and um, honestly, it still looks quite good. Um, yeah, the new one, of course, is more fancy and sharp, but whatever. And after that, it's just the same pages as uh, other instructions. Quick look at the sticker sheets inside this is for the Imperial one, this is for the Snow Speeder set, and this one's for the pod racing set, obviously. 
look at the smaller set first and compare this to the original. Uh, original on the left, new one on the right. So the original one is a lot more blocky, a lot more Lego-y, shall we say, and there were slightly less custom parts. And of course this window frame there is rounder, whereas this one is more angular, ironically. So yes, there's no control panels on these. Both of these open like that on the front, and there's no control panel on the old one, but there is on the new one, although there's no details on there, even from the sticker sheet. I have applied the Imperial logos on here, which is just like a silver Imperial thing there, and it does look decent enough. Uh, there's a brighter color scheme on the blue there, whereas this one has more of a darkish blue, which I think does look cooler and fits the theme a bit better. Over on the back here, we have uh, some similar pieces used. Uh, the top of the, of the old one is smoother, so, okay. And now this back piece here, now the original set came with one type uh, Shadow Trooper and three Stormtroopers, so there's the new one in the newer designs. Both of these can open up and let go of this troop transport thingy. Now on this one, on the box it's advertised to have Stormtroopers facing that way, so you have one, two, three, and four sitting in here, but there was only three Stormtroopers, and that always bugged me with the old set. It was like, okay, you have this on the picture, but then you don't have enough Troopers? Like, would have really killed you to have one extra Stormtrooper in the set? I guess it did. Whereas this one here, uh, they've changed this. There's a lot more detailed build for that little plate there. But they only have three seats for Troopers. So they're like, instead of giving you the extra Stormtrooper, they're just like, uh, actually there's no space. It was always meant to only have three Troopers. Lame. <laughs> But uh, the more bulkier build does make it make more sense because if you think about it, if you just have this and it just launches out and I guess this drops, uh, it's like a drop pack and just lands somewhere, this looks like that they can actually hide some engines and some sort of levitation thing in here. Um, so that's cool, I guess. And also the way this is built, it stops this from uh, sort of going left and right, shaking all over the place, which is good too. Whereas the old one, this thing flaps all over the place and because it's mostly just a plate, you're thinking, well, well what what uh, propulsion systems do they have in this? It's going to go, and the troopers will be dead. <laughs> so, yes. Um, bit of problems on the old one. But um, overall, back then, this was um, an okay set. It was nice for a trooper builder. Uh, the Shadow Trooper is, is nice in the set, which is one of the highlights on this. Uh, which is also highlighted in the new one. Uh, more on troopers later, of course. So, the old one, bit flimsy, bit angular. The new one is much more snazzy, um, more sleek, and um, with a darker color scheme, looks a bit cooler. Is the new one better than the old one? Uh, in terms of design, yes, it looks better. It's, it just feels more realistic in a way. As, as, as much as a small set this is, it, it does seem more realistic. Whereas if you want something that uh, can carry more troopers than the old one. Yeah, the new one's better. I have the pod racer and yeah, it looks pretty nice. Even though I haven't added the sticker details yet, it still looks really good and almost feels like, honestly, it didn't, doesn't really need the sticker details. So the stickers are nice, I guess, but you know, this still looks really good in its own right. Nice little fun detail there, they use these um, uh, Orokai sword slash blades, just molded in this uh, bronze color for the parts here. So if you want parts like this, they, they make, they're still making them um, in this color. And you got these little hinges there to do the little slowdowns and stuff. And uh, you know, this thing, even if you remove this transparent support in the middle, it will still hold together. Obviously you can't like fly it around easily or play with it, but it still holds quite well. And uh, that's mostly thanks to this. Uh, these, this tube doesn't just stick into the front, it actually goes all the way in and gets clipped on, so it's quite secure. As for this transparent piece here, you can easily hold it like that, like the gun, so kids can actually play around with this. And you know, it would be nice if they released some of the other pod racers again. Like this is a 20th anniversary thing, I get it, they released this. They only released one ship because of the amount of details that are in this ship. The price was already a bit more than I guess what the original would have gone for or much higher than they already anticipated. So for the price range and the scale of this thing, it's nice. But if they use this as a leeway to re just release some regular pod racers, maybe just a Saboba one, that would be great. Well, I don't have the old one to compare it to, just by seeing the photos, the detailing on this is so nice. The shape of the actual pod here looks excellent, these flaps that go up, yeah, they look great. As for the engine itself, you've got all these play features, uh, movements, flaps, uh, even this rotates a little bit, but um, the details on the tubing here is just very good. But most importantly, as good as it looks, it's also very secure. 
you know, this thing's shaking around a little bit, but it doesn't come off. And so if you're just flying this around, it, it gets that realistic feel. The lightning on the front there is okay, I guess. I'm not a fan of this cross-section thing. I wish both were facing front because it just, I just think it'll look better that way. Uh, I guess from an angle it looks better, but on the top again, you, you only see one side, not the other. So um, since I think the front facing is most important, having them both flat would be nicer. So yeah, pretty good ship. Finally, with the snow speeder set, we have this extra little cannon here, which I think is roughly to scale. If you think about it on the battlefield, as well as many of the video games, uh, they didn't just have the tower turrets. They actually had these smaller ones where they were standing in the trench as well. So that's pretty cool. Nothing too special here. It goes around in a hinge. There's a little hole there for you to plug in one of the uh, rifles that they have. And yeah, pretty cool. But of course, the main ship is the important part. Uh, I've never had a snow speeder Lego set. I've always wanted one. And um, much like the X-Wing that came out earlier this year, I feel like this just combines a little bit of the Ultimate Collector's design philosophy in here. And I think it looks really good. Um, and you can easily remove these uh, play features. Just do that. There you go. No silly play feature if you don't want that. But they're, they're there if you want to play around with it. Three uh, little bits there just to hold it up. Uh, would have been interesting if there's two transparent bits, but whatever, you can't see it, so it stands quite nice and flat there. The overall color scheme is really white. A uh, little bit of color shining through the orange there, uh, some of the red and blacks, but um, yeah, it's just really white and whiter than I expected. I am. Um, you know, I always think that snow speeders were a little bit on the grey side, but whatever, it still looks nice. Uh, what I really don't like about this is the way they printed the uh, cockpit window. Like, they decided to put the moulding injection on the top, so there's this little circle here where the print doesn't go in. It just looks ugly. It's... Like, why? Why couldn't they mould it the other way around? Uh, that's weird. But anyway, to open this up... Um, you open it in sections, I guess, so... Oh. <sighs> Well, that didn't work out as I wanted to. Right, so the way you open this is the hinge is, as you saw, very fragile. If I just wanted to open this up, ah, this clicky bit is annoying. So you can do that, and you can just put Luke in there, or Luke comes out. If you want to get, um, if you want to, if you want to get that take on the whole Empire guy in there, you're gonna have to like open this up this way as well. Or uh, so inside here, you have a little bit of space to put all the accessories, the guns and lightsabers, and all that. I guess if you did want to roleplay and not open that up and just open this side, you could... Unless this bit so tight, but anyway. Um, this joint here is very annoying. I wish it wasn't the clicky joint now. I really wish. I guess you could open it this way, so it's like just the back's open. Um, I think that didn't happen in the movie or whatever it doesn't happen. But, it, you know, it's just kind of cool that you can do that if you wanted to and still hold stuff in place. So, uh, you know, this one also has these mini features. You've got these flaps that open and move. That's kind of nice. You've got some... <laughs> well, the ship itself is quite secure. Uh, you got this rotating gun here. It doesn't really do anything. It's just a stud shooter, but you do have the claw and hook there to shoot that out. The back design of the ship does look quite nice as well. And the bottom is clean for the most part. These wings are on a little hinge, but they don't rotate or flap all over the place. So overall, uh, the entire build of this snow speed is quite good. I am quite happy with it in general. I just hate this joint there, and I hate this little print defect that they've done as part of the design. But overall, it still looks really good. I am still happy I picked this up at a discounted price. So let's just take a look at these special minifigures first. Uh, I do have a classic, like, this Luke from one of the magnet sets, I believe. You know, just take him off the magnet before they were glued on permanently. And uh, yeah, from what I can tell, just by looking at these, they look pretty similar to the original ones. If you do have the original ones, put them side by side. There are going to be subtle differences, but if you don't and just look at these, these look excellent, look great. One of the biggest differences these have compared to the originals, um, aside from this really ugly 20 year thing on the back, which is uh, covered on the Lando ones, that's okay. But if you really want to remove these, you can, since the original ones didn't have any back printing, that's okay. But aside from that, the other issue that the new ones have compared to the old ones is that Lego is, of course, allergic to white paint. So if you have the original Rebel Pilot Luke, he's going to have a better white on the orange uh, torso, whereas this one looks a little bit faded. So that's annoying. But otherwise, these are the same as the old one. Uh, Lando here, he uses the softer cake material, but because they had to do the two-layer thing with yellow and blue, 
this cape sits right in the middle between the old capes and the new capes. It's not too soft, not too hard, and I think this is absolutely great. I wish all the capes were this sort of uh, toughness. And of course you get this little base, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Lando Calrissian with the 20th anniversary stuff. And um, all of these bases also come with extra 2x4 plates, so if you have all 5 of them, you just connect them and move them along. So that's cool, that's a nice little display, that's nice, I guess. And if I get the uh, Slave 1 set, which I really want, it's just a little bit out of my price range right now. Don't have extra cash to buy that, but if I get the Slave 1, then I have another one there, that's pretty cool. So, uh, in the middle we have the new troopers, and on the side we have the older ones. Just like I said before, in this set and the original one, you get one Shadow Trooper and three regular Storm Troopers. Uh, and I think this is the first time I'm taking a look at the LEGO set with the new Trooper design. I'm going to tell you right now, I absolutely hate it. A lot of people out there are like, well, it's a bit different from certain angles, it looks good. But the old Storm Trooper helmet was just fine. While this one is lacking like leg prints and certain printing on the actual helmet, Later Stormtroopers that use this same mold have improved on the printing, added leg printing and added chest printing, some even arm printings and all that, and extra details on the helmets, and they looked fine. So why do I hate the new one so much? Well, before I go into all negative and stuff, I will give it one perk of the new helmet. The new helmet is dual molded, so that the black line and the white line will always be accurate and okay. Whereas the old one, sometimes the black printing will get a little messed up on the side or around the edges, but you know, it's not too bad, it's just something that happens occasionally. But that's the only thing I like from the new one. The new one removes pretty much all articulation, I can do that, sort of, kinda, but the old one you can move it a lot more, it can be a lot more expressive. If you do want to rotate it past the shoulders, just lift it up a little bit instead. And it still looks relatively natural. This one, if you want to do that, look at that, it looks stupid. Um, the front of the trooper, his jawline there, also like he's starting to melt. Uh, he's got like a really big jaw. This stormtrooper is perhaps if Peter Griffin has a stormtrooper. American Dad, Stan Smith, big jawline as a stormtrooper. This is not a regular stormtrooper jawline, it looks ridiculous. And that's just looking from the front, you can also say that he looks like he has had a peanut uh, allergy reaction and it's got a big neck thing going on. It looks weird. It gets a lot worse when you see it from the side. The back of the helmet looks absolutely fine, looks regular, in fact the molding is almost the same. It's just here. It almost looks like someone made a plasticine figure of Song Trooper and just pulled on his jaw and just stretched it down and chin. It looks really bad, it's just stretched, it's oversized, it looks ridiculous. I used to think the Iron Man helmet looked oversized but this just makes that look tiny. This is bad. Just, just no. <laughs> it just means I won't be tempted to buy any future sets to just have more Stormtroopers. Because God knows I have way more enough Stormtroopers than, than I need. Um, they're all just standard and scattered around in my Death Star set. But, uh, I, no, it's just ugly. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. But I do need to bring him back just to talk about the torso printing and stuff, so uh, hi again. Uh, torso print is similar as the last version of Stormtroopers. You've got this weird chest shape, you got the clo trooper head underneath, boring, and um, the leg print's okay I guess, and the back print's okay too. Um, I'm, I've not really been a fan of the front so chest piece printing, but I can live with it. It just seems a bit too small, a bit too triangle in proportions, whereas the old one, just the shadow line there, looks much better. I just, just yeah. So the same complaints would go with the shadow trooper as well. Um, Actually, uh, on top of that, uh, I guess I'll also complain that I can barely see the eyes there. The old one, you have a nice silver print. Maybe it's not as realistic, but before I figure a toy this small, being able to see some of the details, I think it's a lot better than just going for just utter realism. Because at the end of the day, this is still a Lego figure. It's not going to be realistic. <laughs> so trying to do that is pointless. So uh, the reason why the eyes aren't showing up is uh, because A, they're not printed, and B, uh, the sort of metallic grey plastic that they've used, they really should have used the silver plastic instead of that. Part way so that we get uh, Angel and Anakin Skywalker, uh, Kitty Skywalker. So, um, lifting the goggle up, I think the figure for the most part is very similar to previous versions, or if you had any of the versions that came out in between, or some of the micro fighter sets, so very similar there. Face, he has a happy face on one side, and a more um, sad annoyed face on the other side 
and uh, she's got the new sort of um, half articulated legs some of the figures seem to be having now um, I think they started with the Harry Potter sets that came out recently in 2019 so that's cool that she has that that means she'll be shorter than like Obi-Wan or Qui-Gon but still have the articulation that's great and I uh, just do want to point out let's not forget that the bootlegs did that first before Lego with these short articulated legs uh, her piece mold I think is the same as previous uh, Padme's whatever on the back she has a angry face when you call her an angel <laughs> are you an angel no <laughs> so um there we go uh so yeah both of these figures look quite good i like the printing they're sharp on these they look great and um i did have an anakin figure before again i think from one of the magnet sets but i'm quite happy to have a uh, episode one padme figure as well i think that's quite cool finally with the snow speeder we have fluke skywalker dax and a rebel soldier rebel soldier comes with a regular molded white backpack otherwise he does have some back printing looks pretty good uh, this print is nice and um, no back face printing and he is using all these older pieces these radio pieces for the cannons and it's quite cool it reminds me of the uh, older Lego sets I like this a lot little details on the uh, torso there also printed quite nicely uh, Luke and Dax here follow the newer versions of Rebel Pies that they printed same with the X-Wing set that I have the visor effect does look quite nice printed directly onto the face but that also means that you're not going to use this head for anything else if you just take the helmet off it's going to look weird um, I, it's very limited use visor on the helmet does have the disadvantage of blurring the face a little bit but at the same time it means that you know you can use the heads in a lot more different ways so Outside the heads, the torsos are printed the same and of course faded and ugly, it's just annoying. Uh, why can't they use more white paint? Seriously, the orange is shining through the white vest as well as the little white buttons in the middle of this grey area. It's very distracting and looks terrible. I, bootlegs have done better jobs at these than official LEGO. This is really annoying, LEGO. Um, and of course the helmets are painted different along with the head. If we just rotate them to the side, you can see it's a little bit extra detail there on his helmet. And quick look at the back. Both of them have a secondary face print. Hmm, his, uh, his, this face has the visor up, that's cool, I guess. You can almost not see it, so why even bother printing that there? That's weird. As he has, I guess that's his face just before he dies. From taking on the Empire! So yeah, this trooper carrier, kind of regret picking it up, I really don't like the new designs and I really won't be picking up any new LEGO style sets because of Stormtroopers anymore. Old ones I did, but not the new ones anymore. So for these builds, they're quite nice. I think the uh, trooper carrier is okay, just really don't like the troopers themselves. The fact that a classic Han Solo comes with them is a little annoying, but if you do have the Han Solo, which I don't think it's a rare figure in its own right, then there's no reason to pick this one up. I really don't care about those printer stands and names on them, 20th anniversary. They don't do much for me. Like I care about the minifigures and the toy part of it. S display stands, whatever. And I recommend anyone don't pick these up if you already have these classic figures just for that display stand or like a 20th anniversary printed on their backs as a variant. It's just not worth it. The pod racer set, the build is awesome. It looks complex when it's quite simple to build. It's quite sturdy and the overall aesthetics of it, even without the stickers, look quite nice. With the stickers, it looks even better, of course. I just overall look, like it quite a lot. I just kind of wish LEGO, maybe in the next wave of LEGO Star Wars stuff, they will release some more pod racers so this pod racer can race against them. The way that they've done the whole holding up like a toy, like a gun thing, so you can race around the pod racer, that's, that's quite good. So for kids, of course, so have that with some other pod racers, at least the Boba, that would be nice. It'd be nice to see a, a a Suburban Pop Racer with today's techniques built together as well as a new Suburban minifigure instead of the old one that's just sort of like clunk and it doesn't really move it would be nice to see how they produce a Suburban figure these days I hope they don't just get the old mode and just paint it up it's better than nothing but that would be kind of lame and of course I'm quite a big fan of this snow speeder despite some minor hiccups I like this snow speeder a lot so happy I picked up a snow speeder finally and like just like I was so happy to pick up an X-Wing finally and a TIE Fighter finally uh, in this year. Yes, I did have a TIE Fighter a long time ago, but that feels like another era of LEGO building. If 
hard to simplify, didn't look nice. But some of these new Star Wars ships and Lego designs, all taking cues from the Ultimate Collector series and just shrinking them down to minifigure stuff. This is awesome, much like the Batmobile that's recently released, taking big collector's designs, shrinking them down into these small sets. So cool. I do like the extra piece there, and the extra sort of rebel soldier there. It's cool, it's like you get these extra things and the build's so nice, and the relatively cheap price that I paid for it. Now if you did pay the original price for it, it's still good, I was still gonna get it, but um, I'm just far more excited now with uh, the reduced price. And of course, finally have a Bespin uh, Lando. I never had it, I never would have done. Now, if LEGO can stop being stingy and release like a leg, arm, um, proper printed Boba Fett with any sets, that would be nice instead of just relegating him to the Collector series. <sighs> that would be nice. I, I don't get that argument like, oh, I paid more for it, I got this and I should be getting the premium figure because I paid more for it. Yeah, no, you paid more for it because you got a bigger set. Like, that, that's, that argument doesn't work because if you paid for the Ultimate Collector's Slave 1, you still got a bigger set of more detailed set. For everyone who can't afford that, them being able to get a proper Boba Fett in a cheaper set doesn't neglect you paying more for the big set. And if you think otherwise, that's just selfish thinking, and I don't like it. I think everyone deserves a chance to pick up a figure or toy that they like. Which is why I don't mind bootlegs so much. They can't get or afford the official thing. Get the bootleg. Not everyone's made of money. But anyway, back to this, these sets. These 20th anniversary sets are pretty awesome. I look forward to picking up the slave one set maybe next month after my next paycheck. As And like I said, I'm not going to bother picking up the uh, Clone Walker one. Plus that one comes with a classic Darth Vader, which I have far too many of, including the uh, special chrome one, which I have in like, a nice little box somewhere. So what do you guys think of this video? Do you like these 20th anniversary sets? Do you wish they would have picked some other vehicles? I think they probably could have done that. But I should do a video of some other top 10 picks, like instead of these vehicles. Top 10 should a LEGO Star Wars 20th anniversary sets. As always, you can click the thumbs up and thumbs down button how you feel about these sets. Leave a comment below what you think and what set you would have preferred in this 20th anniversary stuff or what classic minifigure you would have preferred as well. As always, you can support this channel by heading over to Patreon or turning our block off. And then, you know, come over to Facebook and, you know, have some chats and look at some of the other photo shoots of other toys that I do. If you like Star Wars, I've reviewed plenty of their model kits as well as figures. And if you like Lego, I've reviewed tons of official Lego and knockoff stuff that are quite decent and quite bizarre. As always, take care, have a nice day, I'll see you guys soon, and may the Force be with you.